Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Hosted by Pastor Lester Lewis, co-host Charlize Wilkerson and Leroy Carey. Produced by David Humphreys. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. Today on Ask the Messengers, we take a look at what the state of Michigan and the federal court in Detroit are doing in the areas of substance abuse, recovery, and prevention, and how they're dealing with the current opioid epidemic. Lester Lewis goes one-on-one with the director of the Office of Recovery-Oriented Services at the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. He will also go one-on-one with Judge Terrence Berg of the federal court in Detroit. Plus, we have two real individuals who are in recovery. They'll tell their real stories about the struggles they went through before deciding that enough was enough. We start with those real stories. Uh, What was my drug of choice? Uh, My drug of choice was alcohol and opiates. Uh, How old when I first started using? Um, um, Probably like 12. With the alcohol. How did I get a hold of alcohol? Um... Really, it was just like through like my friends and like their big brothers and sisters and stuff and like my parents, I had it, you know, everywhere. What was my drug of choice? Alcohol, cocaine, uh, prescription pills, um, marijuana. I was 13 when I first started using marijuana and drinking. Uh, I was about 18, between 18, 19 when I started doing promethazine, codeine. Uh, I was like 20 when I started doing cocaine. And about 2021 when I started doing cocaine and prescription pills. How did my using affect my relationship with my family? Um, You know, I guess I wasn't around, like, you know, for anything, really, it's like I, I, I just I left, you know what I'm saying? Like I just got real um, embarrassed, you know, of who I was, and I, I just didn't want to be around them. You know, I was standing for my family. I was doing things. I was hurting my family, not just hurting myself. You know, I was burning bridges with my family. You know, I was breaking in, breaking into my grandmother's house. I was stealing money, you know, I was pawning, pawning things. Uh, it had a real big effect on my family. Now, welcome to Ask the Messengers. Hi, I'm Lester Lewis, your host for Ask the Messengers. And on today's show, we are coming live and direct on location in the state capital of Michigan. That's right, we're in Lansing, Michigan. And we are here today at the state capitol to talk with Mr. Larry Scott. He is the director of the Recovery Oriented Systems of Care for the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. We're going to have a great interview, and believe me, he's got some great things to share with you. Let's go to that interview right now. We're going to get right into this interview with him because we've got so much information that we'd like to share with you. Mr. Scott, it is so great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for taking your time and being involved in this effort. What exactly is your job responsibility uh, in the office of uh, the Recovery Oriented Systems? I direct the office and we are responsible uh, for funding uh, 10 regional entities that are responsible for behavioral health and substance use disorder prevention and treatment services for all the 83 counties in Michigan. Those 10 regional entities are called prepaid and patient health plans. For example, in the Detroit area, that would be the Detroit Wayne uh, Mental Health Authority. Okay. So we provide them funding, uh, for example, to do and to administer uh, and fund uh, substance use disorder prevention, um, treatment, and recovery services, including uh, prevention of of opioid misuse, uh, prevention of opioid overdose deaths, as as well as treatment uh, programming for those individuals with opioid use disorders. What areas of substance abuse uh, does your, your office in its funding of these different entities, what does it cover? All areas, okay. uh, all substance abuse problems, uh, be it uh, legal drugs, mm-hmm. uh, for example, like tobacco and alcohol, uh, as well as illicit drugs. Uh, those that are uh, that are not to be sold over the counter. <laughs> uh, and, uh, for example, uh, we provide prevention 
uh, strategies and programming, if you will, uh, pertaining to alcohol, yes. uh, uh, underage drinking of alcohol, underage uh, uh, tobacco use, uh, uh, marijuana use, uh, methamphetamine, uh, any type of, of substance that impairs the brain, okay. we provide prevention services for. We also provide treatment services to those persons who become dependent uh, because of misuse of those particular substances, okay. be they legal or illicit. Have you noticed that there has been a, 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 a spike, obviously in the opioid, but in any other area of, 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 of uh, substance abuse? We're, we're starting to see an uptick in, uh, in methamphetamine use. Uh, we're seeing an uptick in, in um, interdiction, uh, if you will, uh, by, the, by the state police uh, in uh, a, a methamphetamine uh, sites, if you will, for lack of a better term. Uh, we're seeing also an uptick in, in cocaine use. Okay. Uh, we're seeing, uh, well, meth marijuana has always been an issue uh, it continues to be an issue, especially in Southeast Michigan. So those numbers are, are still, I won't say they're rising, but they're fairly um, consistent. Uh, underage drinking is still a, a major problem in Michigan, although the numbers have been down uh, uh, in the last uh, several years. I heard you say just about the, uh, the state police and, and on the policing uh, level, uh, that one of the things that you guys also do is you provide funding for the uh, Narcan kids. That is correct. Can you talk a little more about that? Yes, we provide uh, the Michigan State Police uh, funding uh, to distribute Narcan to the Michigan State Police posts throughout the state. Uh, they have what is called an angel project, you may have heard of that, yes. uh, where you have uh, uh, a state police post that will offer an opportunity to individuals uh, who, who are using illicit drugs uh, to come forth and volunteer for treatment. Uh, that officer uh, or that uh, community service officer uh, or a peer recovery support specialist would then take that individual, and we call it a warm handoff, Okay, You're right. <laughs> uh, and, and hand off that individual to a, 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 a treatment assessment center. Uh, our PBA and patient health plans have what is called access management systems, service systems, so the, the peer recovery support specialist and or the state trooper would then take that individual uh, to the assessment center to be screened and assessed for the appropriate level of care. That's the angel part of the project. So we're funding the, 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 the purchase and distribution of Narcan to those uh, police officers just in case they happen to be uh, involved in, in, in helping some, someone recover from an overdose. Okay. Now have you seen that the, the Narcan kits have been beneficial in the saving of lives? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the Detroit area, I would advise you to call uh, the, the authority, um, I'm going to mention her name, but Darlene Owens. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> uh, and uh, Willie Brooks is the new uh, uh, PHP coordinator. Okay. But if you call Detroit uh, Wayne Authority, they'll give you the numbers of people that they actually were able to revive based upon that, that funding. Wonderful, wonderful. And again, that's part of the moniker here at Ask the Messengers. Uh, we're trying to help save lives, and that's okay. important. Well, Mrs. Scott, thank you so much for your time. And we want to uh, just thank you so much for being on the show and sharing all the information, uh, which was a wealth of information. And, and can you just once again give us the website one more time just so that we can make sure we have it? www.michigan.gov slash bhrecovery. All right. All right. Well, thank you again for being on the show. We appreciate it so very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Mr. Scott said, you know, this uh, in order for this to, 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 to really take place, the, the recovery and, and to educate and to make sure that we're there for uh, those who are in uh, a state in which they really need help, uh, the state has, has come in and been a partner in the effort to uh, bring help to those uh, across the, the state, not just in certain areas, but across the state. And for that, we are certainly uh, grateful for here in the state of Michigan. You may be viewing this and may get it in another state, but here in Michigan, we've got some effort going in uh, from the state level to make sure that everything uh, that we are working to help people uh, save lives. And that's what the Ask the Messengers is all about. And we want to ask you and just uh, make sure that you are, uh, if you're not, we want you to be a part of helping us uh, to save lives. And whatever donation you may be able to give, whatever donation you can send, uh, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, the information is there on the screen, and feel free. Uh, we'd like for you to also call us. 
Uh, if you've got anything that you'd like to talk about, you've got a, uh, someone who needs help, or if you would like to share your story, uh, call us so that you can, we can connect with you and get you on Ask the Messengers. We're going to be right back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more information on Ask the Messengers. Ask the Messengers continues after this short break with Lester Lewis going one-on-one -on -one with Judge Terrence Berg of the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Michigan. Thank you for calling the Lab Law Firm. Injured, we can help. Call the Lab Law Firm today. Call for free consultation. 855-HELP-YOU. Millions of dollars have been recovered. No recovery, no fee. Over 40 years experience. Don't trust the insurance adjuster. The insurance adjuster works for the insurance company, but we work for you. Call today, 855-HELP-YOU. That's the law, law firm. And remember, your choice of lawyer makes a big difference. Hi, my name is Linda Owens. I work at Greenford Hair Collection, and I love doing hair. I've been doing it for almost 30 years now, actually. And I do a little bit of everything. This doll right here is a uh, pin curl. This is my weekly client, Lanise, short and sassy. She just got a fresh haircut last week. The name of the salon is Greenfield Hair Collective. We're located on Greenfield between Otter Drive and Curtis. I'm on the second level. My name is Brenda. My phone number is 313-729-8194. Give me a call. I love what I do. I'm Artesia Washington, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Head Injury. We're restoring you to your previous level of functioning is our goal. We offer services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, aquatic therapy, massage therapy, and counseling. An automobile accident is an unfortunate event. If you feel that you or a loved one can benefit from our services, you can be reached at 248-415-2500. We look forward to hearing from you. We'll be right back with more of Ask the Messengers. Looking for a rewarding career in healthcare? Enroll now at Odyssey Educational Center. Become a certified nurse and assistant by taking our three week program or enroll to become a hemodialysis technician in our 10 week program. We offer day and evening classes, free childcare, ages six weeks to five years old, payment plans and financial aid available. Plus, we are a Michigan Works affiliate. Enroll now at Odyssey Educational Center. Area code 313 341 7512. Your new career begins at Odyssey. Welcome, Judge Mathis. Thanks for coming to share an important message with the Wayne County taxpayers. Well, thank you for allowing me to help. You know, most of my life I was a resident of Wayne County, and so I'm here to help because Treasurer Sabri wants to work with Wayne County homeowners to keep families in their homes and prevent foreclosure. If you're having trouble making your property tax payments, let us know. We have many resources to help. Take the first step towards staying in your home by going down to the Wayne County Treasurer's Office on the fifth floor of the International Building in Greektown. Stop by today to learn more about our payment plans and especially the newly extended interest rate reduction program. Already in the payment plan? It's important you stay in good standing. Making property tax payments is now easier than ever. We have placed payment kiosks in Rite Aid stores and community centers across the county. We've also added kiosks in our offices. Contact us at 313-224-5990 or email us at taxinfo at waynecounty.com. And now, more real stories from real people. Like, I got in a car with these guys, people I didn't really know, and they were like, we went and, uh, went and robbed a couple houses. And I really didn't, I didn't think that's what we were gonna do, I guess, you know. Um, you know, and then being sick all the time, you know, being sick. To get me, what would get me from being sick, um, I needed like, like three or four packs of dope at one time, then I was okay. A good day of using, you know, I, I guess for me it was just being able to, to not be sick, you know, and knowing in my mind, like, okay, I got enough money for tomorrow, and... I'm gonna be okay for the next day. And I would constantly be thinking about like, you know, trying to scheme and, and make sure like I was always not gonna be sick. Being sick was like not being able to move, my whole body being in a lot of pain from the opiates, um, from not having the opiates in my system. So being sick, like I couldn't move, I was throwing up, um, just shaking my legs, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, I didn't drink nothing. Uh, and that would go on for days and days and days and days. And uh, 
it was like on a normal day I could protect myself that was one time that I always felt you know being sick and being out outside on the street that I knew I couldn't like I couldn't protect myself my last house was like I remember standing in the gas station waiting for somebody to bring me some money so I can go cop and the guy never showed up and I had fell out with a buddy one of my using buddies I was using with and you know, it, it dined on me when we fell out. I had realized that I ain't had much friends. I didn't have no friends at all. You know, my last get high, I was sleeping in the house where it was cold. Um, you know, as a result of weathering, I was sleeping in the house where it was cold because I didn't pay the DT because I'd rather get high than paying the DT. You know, so it was kind of like, at the end of the road, I was, I was feeling like committing suicide. I was feeling like my family was, was, was best without me. Hi, I am Pastor Lester Lewis, and this is Ask the Messengers. We have a great guest with us, and we're so happy to have Judge Terrence Byrne. How are you, Judge? I'm doing great, thanks. Good, good. Good to have you on the show with us. And listen, there is, there is this opioid epidemic that we're dealing with. Uh, it has not, it is not given any prejudice. It has gone across the lines of uh, social, economic, uh, and it is attacking uh, our communities. Uh, how are the courts handling this opioid epidemic? Well, we see a number of cases uh, in our court involving the opioid epidemic, and it has been an unbelievable crisis that our nation's going through and that our own area is going through. You know, we've had uh, over uh, 800 people die from overdose deaths related to opioids in 2016. We had uh, 799 uh, in 2017. And so the kinds of cases that we see are two different kinds primarily. Some of them involve medical professionals who are over prescribing these painkillers right and oftentimes it's essentially a form of Medicare fraud mm. where they're using the Medicare system in order to get people to go and get prescriptions for these painkillers where they don't really have any medical need and then they're selling these right. and uh, it's a very very high markup about twenty five dollars a pill wow. the other kind of case that we see involving opioids is in the area of heroin and the use of fentanyl and fentanyl is an additive that is an extremely powerful opioid and dangerous, and it's been responsible for a lot of these overdose deaths. All right. Well, you just said that uh, the, some of the cases is because of the overprescribing. Uh, now, here in Michigan, uh, laws have been passed that uh, doctors, as well as those who are dealing those drugs, uh, can be charged with a crime if they are connected to someone's overdose death. Yes, they can. And even if they just are prescribing things for no medical need and it's and they're aware of that and they're doing so in bad faith, that would also be a kind of case that can be charged. Uh, it's amazing when you look at the, the numbers regarding Medicare, for example. Uh, we've got about 30,000 doctors in the state of Michigan. And in a two-year period, only about 15,000 or half of them even prescribe any of these kinds of opioids. And we're talking about OxyContin. Right and other kinds of painkillers like that. What's remarkable is that out of the remaining 15,000 doctors that do prescribe these, only 224 of these doctors are responsible for a huge percentage of the prescriptions that are done. Wow. It's pretty remarkable. Wow. So, so there is a direct connection with those the, the prescribing of or over prescribing of those of those opioids as well as those who are uh, getting hooked and and now getting to the place where they need they need help it's sad but it's true the, right. those few doctors are responsible for 50 percent mm. of the charges for medicare for these kinds of opioids wow so you guys obviously you ha you have a uh, uh, an initiative uh, to kind of help with some of the, uh, 
the cases that come through your office, uh, and I think that's called specialty courts. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes, uh, we, we do have a pilot program here that's called Restart that uh, is an attempt. Uh, it's really spearheaded by one of our magistrate judges, Elizabeth Stafford, who's a very creative uh, judge on our court here. And she has been working with the other judges to try to essentially provide a second chance for individuals who are charged in certain kinds of cases where there's addiction or where there's another reason to give a second look to what they have gone through and possibly to give them other options besides criminal prosecution. Okay. Uh, Judge, I do want to ask you, uh, as we uh, come to a close, uh, what age groups do you see uh, that, are, uh, in, that are dealing but also being impacted by uh, this opioid epidemic? Well, again, I'd have to say it goes across the board. It's remarkable how we're seeing that in the overdose deaths, they're distributed almost uh, equally among the different age groups from mm -hmm. your 50 to 60 year olds all the way down to your younger people. So the opioid epidemic is very serious affecting everyone. In terms of the kinds of cases that we see, I would say it tends to be for your organized criminal groups that are in the neighborhoods. They tend to be younger people, like in yeah. their 20s, yeah. and then the leaders might be in their 30s. Right. But just yesterday, I had two individuals, two different kinds of cases. One of them was a fellow who was a heroin dealer who had mm -hmm. done a number of different heroin distributions, and he was 50 years old, 50 oh. years old. Uh -huh. And he had a very long criminal history and ended up getting a very tough sentence of almost mm. 20 years, mm. tough, tough sentence. Uh, we had another person who was uh, a professional. She was actually a dentist and mm. she had prescribed herself wow. these opioids wow. over a period of years and ruined her life, sadly, because of her own addiction. Uh, mm. Now, her guidelines were much lower. She didn't have to do a prison time. Uh, sentence because really she was only harming Over herself, herself right, yeah. but nevertheless her life had been ruined by this. Fortunately for her she had been sober since 2015 which was fantastic, but these are the kinds of cases that we see. Uh, everyone is affected. Wow. Well, Judge, listen, we've got some more to come. Uh, don't go anywhere. We're having a great conversation with Judge Terrence Burr uh, and we are going to be right back, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more Ask the Messengers. <laughs> I'm Artesia Washington, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Head Injury, where restoring you to your previous level of functioning is our goal. We offer services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, aquatic therapy, massage therapy, and counseling. An automobile accident is an unfortunate event. If you feel that you or a loved one can benefit from our services, you can be reached at 248-415-2500. We look forward to hearing from you. Welcome, Judge Mathis. Thanks for coming to share an important message with the Wayne County taxpayers. Well, thank you for allowing me to help. You know, most of my life I was a resident of Wayne County, and so I'm here to help because Treasurer Shabri wants to work with Wayne County homeowners to keep families in their homes and prevent foreclosure. If you're having trouble making your property tax payments, let us know. We have many resources to help. Take the first step towards staying in your home by going down to the Wayne County Treasurer's Office on the fifth floor of the International Building in Greektown. Stop by today to learn more about our payment plan and especially the newly extended interest rate reduction program. Already in the payment plan? It's important you stay in good standing. Making property tax payments is now easier than ever. We have placed payment kiosks in Rite Aid stores and community centers across the county. We've also added kiosks in our offices. Contact us at 313-224-5990 or email us at taxinfo at waynecounty.com. I would tell them that, that you can do it. Like, you know, that, that whatever's going on, like if you're upset or, or you think your family don't love you, that you are loved. Like everybody, everybody does love you and that you can, you can get clean and it does work. All I can really say from my heart is that there's light up under the tunnel. Uh, there's a better way to live. Uh, I've been there. I've been down. I've been up and down. You know, but my life has really gotten better. Um, you know, just by 
the grace of God who I choose to call and I'm a higher power. I am Lester Lewis and we are back. We are going one-on-one -on -one and having a great conversation with Judge Terrence Byrd. So now, out of your courtroom, uh, what is in place to help people to get into some form of recovery or to provide some type of education for them? Fortunately, in every criminal case that happens in the federal court, even if you get a jail time sentence, you, you get prison, you'll have a period after that of supervised release. Mm -hmm. During that supervised release, all the entire panoply of possible treatment options are open to you and the probation officer is there to work with you to try to make certain that you go through the process of getting the treatment that you need. Okay. Okay. And those are for, for folks who are prosecuted. Okay. But we also need to reach people who are not being prosecuted, right. just right. people who are exposed to drugs. All right. So Judge, if you had someone before you and they were open and willing to hear advice from you, what would you say to someone uh, who is either dealing or someone who is using? What, 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 would you, what words would you have to say to them? Well, gosh, you know, first I would go back somewhat and just say how important uh, the family is. To be able to have a parent who is talking to their children about drugs and about the dangers of drugs and the need to avoid drugs, that's one of the most important things that anyone can do who has children, and I think that that's crucial. For somebody who is already uh, having a drug problem, there is treatment available. Yes. I know we were just talking before about the Salvation yes. Army's treatment and that they yes. have capacity yes. for people right now where right they now. could go there and yes. get treatment and go into rehab. Uh, I know from my own exposure to these cases, people can beat their drug problem. They can do it. It's difficult, but it can be done. All right. Well, Judge, thank you so much for uh, just spending time with us and sharing your heart. Yeah. And we appreciate you so very much and what you do uh, in here in the court. All thank right. you, Lester. Now, listen, don't go before you consider sowing a seed and helping us to keep this program on the air. Uh, we are bringing some absolutely amazing information to you. And so the information is there on the screen. And you can fl please feel free, the donation of any size, large, small, it all helps. Our motto is we are trying to help save lives. And whatever you give goes toward that effort of helping save someone's life. Now, you can also come to any of our meetings. Uh, we have two weekly meetings uh, that meet at our, uh, our Schaefer location. And that those are located on 18400 Schaefer Highway in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, there is a Wednesday session and also a Friday session. So feel free to come by we want to help in any way that we can. Thank you so much for watching Ask the Messengers. We'll see you again next time. For help, contact the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration National Helpline at 1-800-662-4357 or visit their website, www.samhsa.gov. And please like and follow us on Facebook. We also invite you to attend our 12-step program meetings every Wednesday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. and every Friday, 10 a.m. to noon at the Greater Love Christian Center, 18400 Schaefer in Detroit, Michigan.